Right then, last example for this lesson. It's quite a nice one. So a 10 kilogram trunk lies on a horizontal rough floor with a coefficient of friction between the trunk and the floor as root 3 over 4. Calculate the magnitude of the force P, which is necessary to pull the trunk horizontally if P is applied at 30 degrees above the horizontal. Right, so let's draw a picture. So here's my trunk. It weighs 10 kilos, so I've got 10 G acting down. I've got a normal reaction acting up. I've got my friction here. Now the P is going at 30 degrees. Above the horizontal. So if you think about these components, I've got P cos 30 and I've got P. Oh, got that wrong way around, look, see. Hang on. Can I move that? So I've got P sin 30 there and P cos 30 here. Right now, then, let's see what we're trying to do. Let's work out, so it says calculate the magnitude of P necessary to pull it. Right, so we need it to break it, don't we? We need it right on that, that kind of breaking point. So let's work out what our friction is first then. So let's find my F max, my FR, whatever you want to call it. So F equals MA, perpendicular or vertical. So it's in equilibrium, so up minus down is equal to zero. Now be careful now, because I've got this P sine 30 as well. So R plus P sine 30 minus the 10 G is equal to zero. So my R value is 10 G minus P sine 30. So it's a little bit messy, because I want to do now my friction my F max is mu r. So F max is root 3 over 4 times by r, which is 10g minus p sine 30. Right. Oh, come on. Faffing around. If I expand the brackets... I get my F max as, uh, what have we got here? So 5G root 3 over 2 minus sine 30 is a half. So root 3 over 8 lots of P. So it's in terms of P, but don't worry about it. That's okay. Uh, right, so let's oh, stop doing that. So let's do F equals MA now parallel to the slope or horizontally. So I want forces in the direction of travel, minus forces. Now I want to know what force will break free. So let's set it up equal to zero, and we'll work out what the, what the bare maximum is before it starts to move. So that'll be a P cos 30. That's the only force going in the direction of travel. Minus my friction, which is the 5G root 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 8p is equal to 0. If I expand my brackets a little bit, I've got p cos 30, which is root 3 over 2. should really put it the other way. Then minus and minus is a plus, my root 3 over 8p. And I'm going to take the 5g root 3 over 2 onto the other side. If I take out p as a, as a, uh, a factor, I don't need to, yeah. Because that could be 4 over 8, so that's going to be 5 over 8 there. 8 there. It's 5g root 3 over 2. So then if I multiply through by 8 over 5 root 3, it gives me 39.2 newtons. So any force where P is greater than 39.2 newtons will move, mean that it moves, moves it. Does that make sense? So with this one, I set it up equal to zero to find that F max force that I need to move it. Uh, I hope that kind of made sense. But we're on some questions now, so it's all good. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.